Welcome back. Finally going to get a chance. My lovely wife is traveling with us today. And we're going to do a video about when the driver, when the uh, truck, when prime pumps. Um, there are times that I know if you go back and look at the other videos, um, prime tanker basics videos. This is the same place in Cicero, the bakery, where we pumped and I showed you prime tanker basics one and tools. So I'm going to show you everything for getting set up to pump. And then we'll go through the pumping process and disconnecting and kind of just show you that. First thing we have to do is hook up the hydraulic lines. Show you these hydraulic lines actually in Prime Basics 2 video. Where they go. These just are caps that keep dust out of the hydraulic lines. And then these connect with ETO pump, which I pointed out in the other video. And they have protective caps as well. Basically, we do the inside one first just because it's not going to be in our way when we do the outside one. And give it kind of a shake. And you just want to have finger tight. And there's a small line. Just tighten it as far as our small line. And you can kind of feel where it stops, just make sure it's snug to that point. And same on our second one. You can see if you put this one on first, it's just difficult to reach the one in the back. And these are brass fittings, so you just want to shake them a little bit so you don't cross thread them. Here it's a little easier, you can see that line right there you just tighten it to that line it's snug now the next part we're gonna wait I think they're coming out right now um, we're gonna go up top they're gonna get a sample but we can't climb up to the top of the trailer so we'll stop the video come back when we're getting ready to get hooked up all right so we've already vented the top they went up some places take a sample some places don't they went up there with me we vented I showed you the video of the tank collapsing so we made sure to leave the top open so it doesn't collapse. You've given me permission to cut this seal. So we'll leave that there in case they want to take a look at it later. And now we got to find which of these two... There's two different kinds. And this might have two of the wrong kind, but we'll find out. We've got two different kinds of hoses. This is a female fitting. And there's also a male fitting. Since we've got two female fittings, we got to find out if we have a male fitting on the other end. This is a 20 foot hose. And this one has another female fitting, so we're in good shape. It's, it's going to hook onto that. And they have also a male fitting on the building so it's going to temporarily put this over here <laughs> oh set that there <laughs> <laughs> always something you get one of our puppy pads that i know i've mentioned set that down before we do anything else underneath I mentioned before this is where when we're pumping product comes out of here when the customer pumps we bypass and it comes out of the top so we're gonna cap this off with a one of those straps we're gonna hook up down here we always want to be careful in case some product has leaked so I'm always very careful and go slowly in case something drips out. So we set that aside. This so where channel locks come in because this, uh, this hose was cleaned with hot water. When hot water cools, sucks everything in. So these caps can be difficult to pull off. That one came off pretty easily. Take a look inside. 
And this is a pretty loose connection. So there's a solution for a loose connection. And that's a shim, which is just a metal seal. And these you can get at any truck stop. Um, one of our receivers actually gives us some of these. So when you have a loose turnbuckle, stick it in between and that tightens up the seal in case anything leaks. I'm going to put one of those on either side so we don't have product leaking out from our fitting there. So we got that taken care of, now we're going to go hook up to the building. Similarly, you have to be very careful, as you'll see, this is what having a little bit extra coming out looks like. So we'll grab our hose. Check in there. And hook up. And that's fairly tight. So now, we get our straps. Now, I think I had mentioned before about plastic ones. I use those when we have the rings. So we've got metal rings, so I'm going to use our I'm going to use our plastic ones on these ones with metal rings. And this one we can't, so we need a strap. And even though there's nothing attached to this, if this rattles loose and this comes off, you got all that product that could come out. So, we'll put a strap here. Make sure that these dog ears don't rattle loose. Check that this is in neutral, which is right in the middle. It was pushed forward, which would be to load back into the truck. So make sure it's in neutral. Watch out. Got two more things to do before we're ready to pump. The big wrench, you got two nuts. The top and the bottom of the pump. You gotta make sure they're tight. So you don't have anything leaking. You don't wanna really tighten a ton, but you can see it moved maybe a half inch on both. And similarly for leaking, you got the four nuts on the face plate of the pump. You want to make sure they're tight. And these are going to move just a little bit. Again, you don't want to really crank on them. So, everything's set. We're going to wait for permission to pump. Stop the video and come back when we're ready to pump. Here's a picture. Alright, so just real quick, I'm going to look back here and check the direction. Sometimes when they rewire these pumps, the pump handle is set, and that's back behind here. You check to make sure the pump is going the proper direction. So I've done that. Um, that this is the pump handle is wired correctly. So we're all set to go. We're set to pump. Go over first and open up the valve on the building. So the bottom valve directs flow down to the pump, and the top valve. And we're going to slowly turn on the pump. We're going to check for leaks. We're going to check the temperature. This should warm up. So this is warm. Got product flowing.
close the valve on the building. This one I know you have to push and make sure it's really tight. So the pump is still going and their valve is closed. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to reverse the pump. So now the pump is sucking product back in. All these valves are still open. And we're going to disconnect from the building. And you're going to want to make sure that anything that drips out goes into the hose. And you're going to put their cap back on and close it up. You're going to try and close up everything. Seal. Cap. Cap's in the truck. Oh. I moved the cap while we were taping to the back of the truck. Thanks, Peter. So now we stretch the hose out and we roll it so that all the product gets sucked back into the trailer that's left. There's not much. This hose will hold five gallons if it's a completely full hose. But there's not much left in there, but you want to get as much back out as possible. changes it's not gargling anymore. It will shut that valve and that valve and turn the pump off. Now you just cap off the hose. Lay it out. Disconnect here. Grab your two shims because you're going to want to use those another time. And this is where, even though we haven't had any leaks, this pad is still good to use because you're going to get at least a little bit dripping out. There's no real way to stop that. Cap that off. Here's that second cap that I moved from over there. Cap this hose. And put the hose back in the tube. There's no need to really close those doors. Most of our trailers actually don't have those. You can leave the pad in there. The tank wash will take care of that. Close everything up. And I put two seals. These are prime seals. And we will reseal the trailer. And all that's left to do is go back up top, close the dome lid, put the second seal on there, and then remove the hydraulic lines from the back of the truck. That's how it works for we pump. Next time, I'll do a video where the customer pumps. Thanks for watching. See you next week.